My name is Mike Jimenez, and this is the Alamo City Sportscast coming at you from San Antonio, Texas. Joe Garcia producing today's show, back in the saddle once again. Made my triumphant return last week on a Friday, doing it this Friday as well as we head into the Labor Day weekend. I'm super excited about this weekend because there's a lot going on. UTSA football gets going tomorrow. Can't wait. I was just talking to my nephews on the way over here, Joe. Yeah. I'm trying to get them excited about going because I don't have tickets. I had no plans, but some of my friends are going to make it out there. They're going to tailgate as well. I might need to make that drive down I-10 East to go to Houston. Check this out. I already got it planned out. By the way, we're live on YouTube. We're live on Twitter. We're live on Facebook. Come at us. Again, you could be part of the show by uh, chiming in on YouTube. But here's the thing. If I get into Houston around 11 o'clock or so, I can go to Chinatown. Oh, and that's Have nice. an amazing lunch. Yeah. Something that you can't get in San Antonio. Yeah. I hate Houston. Like, the city of Houston itself is the armpit of Texas. I hate Houston. I thought that was Austin, man. No, Austin's fine. Austin's kind of like the quirky little cousin, where it's like... It's the hippie vibe, it, It's the I hippie like it, vibe, yeah. but you know what? They got the pot. You know, they've got the pot. They've, they know where the where the booze is at. They know where the clubs are at. They know where the girls I, are. I like Austin. Austin's fine. Yeah. Dallas is the bougie. You know, Dallas is the money bags of cities in Texas. Oh, Jeff fit right in there. Yeah. McAllen RGV keeps it burro. Yeah. You know, the rest of it, though, San Antonio is great. Houston, though, bite me. I can't stand the city of Houston. The traffic sucks. They're yeah, so man. pretentious. But they have Chinatown on Bel Air Drive. I go there about two or three times a year. My daughter, Gabby, the one at LSU, she's half Asian. We go over there and we have a blast. The food there is amazing, and you just turn on to Bel Air, and all of a sudden everything is in a different language, and it's it's kind of like when you are in Miami and you go to Calle Ocho, no, which where okay. everything is Spanish and Venezuelan and Cuban and Colombian. That la that Latin influence. Yes. Speaking of which, since it's also I'm also here and it's Frisky Friday, remind me because this was not part of the rundown. Remind me that when we get towards the end of the show, we're going to get frisky. Yeah. I'm going to tell you about the time I was at the Univision station. Oh, Lord. Good God. Didn't want to leave. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Did not work here? <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Again, we have a big show today. The Spurs made a big announcement this morning. We're going to tell you how you can watch the Spurs. Watch Wemby for free. Again, big news for UTSA. The AAC is expanding. How exciting is this for UTSA Roadrunner fans? If you have Spectrum Cable and you're a sports fan, you're pissed off right now. You oh, are yeah, pissed you are. off. Yeah, so we'll are. get into that. Entertainment news. Taylor Swift scaring the living crap out of the movie industry right now. So much so that a much-anticipated horror movie has changed its opening night because of Taylor Swift. She's not only the god goddess of music, but she's also taking over the big screen. How you can check out Taylor Swift. An Eras Tour movie coming out in just over a month. We'll get into that. And again, we'll get a little bit of frisky on a Friday. Lots of people already coming in right now. Tim Gonzalez saying that Mike needs to tell the story. Well, yeah, you need to tell us the story. Let's start off with that. And okay. what they're talking about is the joke. You broke the internet again uh, on, on Twitter, yeah. you know, because you were saying, man. I'm 11 pounds from being effing cute. Okay, so and, there's and two the, things. There's two things. And yeah. the other part of it is the conversation that you and Chris Leha had at the Mad Pecker, bro. Okay, that so, joke has not died down. Okay, so and, and it's funny because um, you guys have been going on and on and on about that joke the past <laughs> few days, and it's been going on on Twitter as well. And I put, Mike is the one friend that has no filter and just likes to no. blurt stuff out. And I said that's, and all you could do is laugh, and it's funny to me. You either love me or hate me. But, I, I but love it. it man. I got to tell you the whole background of the story because you guys have sucked ass. When it comes to describing what happened. Now, okay. I'm just hearing it third hand from okay. Chris. Okay, so we're at Mad Pecker Brewery, which is where we had the Fantasy Gods Fantasy Draft on Sunday. Yeah. And we're just having a pleasant conversation about something. And, you know, you want to know from people who know things, right? Like, if people want to know about finance, they come to me because you can pick my brain because I know things, right? Yeah. Chris Leha, one of our sponsors, MCS, you know, the hard concrete, that hard deck concrete over there. Yeah, hardest. Hardest concrete in the business. Diamond hard, baby. 
So I'm telling him about a problem that I have with my porch. My porch is all jacked up a little bit because the the the, the film that's on top broke off a couple of years ago and yeah. I've never fixed it. So I sent him photos. And we're going back and forth about it. Yeah, I heard him. He was trying to give you advice on how to fix it. Yeah, and he's like, oh, you know, it's DIY. You can, you can do it yourself. I'm like, I'm not going to do it myself. I don't know how to do any of that crap. I know how to mow a yard. I know how to edge a yard. I know how to paint a little bit. I know how to work on a fence. But concrete? No. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Yeah, I have zero experience with that as well. So we're going back and forth, me and Chris Leha. And... He's asking me, how did it get so ugly? How did it get so bad? And I told him that it started when it snowed a couple of years ago. Yeah. True story, because what ended up happening was it got so cold and it snowed so much that that layer that they have on top of my porch broke off. I it guess just, it was it, like an epoxy or something. It was yeah. it, it was something. It cracked. Yeah. And it, and, it, and it just flaked off over time. And it was so funny because I was going back to, like, how this all happened. And I was telling them the story, which, by the way, is a true story. It snowed. You know, that's when the grid went down and everybody was without electricity except for me. You know, I, I'm in my house, you know, steam cleaning carpets because I have electricity and I'm I'm doing what I do. I'm no, cooking. Mom Everyone had no electricity over here steam cleaning carpets i'm steam so. cleaning carpets you know I'm i'd just... be like big f you to that guy <laughs> <laughs> i'm having a great old time i'm using the oven you know turn have, all the I, lights on kids every fucking light <laughs> i have the heater on it was great i had family members and friends who would come over freezing and i'm like go ahead and stay here we have the electricity you kept the dogs inside i hope two of them uh, and, and who left one outside? <laughs> Actually, one of them did enjoy the snow. So I'm talking to Chris Leha about this whole thing. And I was saying that I was watching Ken's and KSAT, and they wanted to know where in Bear County, what neighborhoods had the most amount of snow. Because whenever you hear that it rained half an inch or it snowed three inches, that's at the airport. Yeah. That yeah. is at the airport. It's not the same everywhere, right? No. So they were going back and forth to all these different neighborhoods, and they said, over here in West Bear County, and they started zooming in. They were, And I'm telling them the story. They're zooming in, and they're like, Weston Oaks, West Creek, far West Bear County, Petranco Road near Tally had the most amount of snow. And at this point, the wheels are turning in my head that I got to tell a joke about this, right? Yeah. I'm telling them the story. And they zoomed in and they said, this neighborhood actually had seven inches of snow. So I'm telling them the story. And at this point, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, I got to make a joke out of this. Yeah. I got to make a joke out of this. So I'm telling Chris, I was like, yeah, man. I was like, I didn't believe it. So I had to go measure it myself. So I went out into the front yard and I lay down face first. And you know what? It was seven inches. And then I kind of just ended the conversation. I just moved off to the side. And he didn't say anything for like 15, 20 seconds. And then he busted out laughing because oh he knew what I was going God. with. And he goes, did you use your pecker? Again, we were at Mad Pecker Brewery. Yeah, yeah. Did you use your pecker to measure the the snow? And I insinuated yes, right? Yeah. But but it was all a joke. But I, I was deadpan the way I phrased it. It was the greatest telling of a story slash joke. And uh, you were sitting right next to me, but you didn't hear any of that. I didn't hear any and of it. And Leha lost his shit no, and just started God. laughing. It was like, I cannot believe you said that. That was so funny. That was so funny, man. Lots of people reaching out right now. Chris Leha coming out to us on YouTube saying he knows how to measure the snow. Others are saying Mike Baez of Bear County Social Apparel. Only two inches, only two inches that day. Maybe on your <laughs> side of town. Maybe with your gauge. Uh, but not with mine. Uh, but no, this was fun. Uh, it was fun. But we have lots going on today. People making fun of that joke. People making fun about me having Operation F and Cute on Twitter. You're 11 pounds from being F and Cute. Uh, dude, look at this shirt, man. I was showing you this before. Yeah. This shirt loose. was snug about a month ago. It was snug. And now I've gone from, you know, I wear this because it's a nice shirt from golf club of texas i like the shirt but if i lose 10 more pounds i won't be able to wear it it'll look like a like You're a swimming in it yeah yeah so i've been doing a lot of working out and the working out don't get me wrong about twice a week i'm doing 
Hot Works, which is in the sauna. Yeah. Uh, but really, rowing in the rowing in rowing the sauna. in the sauna, bike riding in the sauna. Uh, but I've been doing a lot of walking between three and five miles, six days a week, and uh, basically doing about twenty miles a week. Uh, when it comes to it all yeah and uh this is all nervous energy for me because as i mentioned last time i was here uh going through a marital separation i'm still hopeful i'm still wearing my wedding ring i'm still hopeful that things will turn around right now i don't know right yeah. now i don't know uh but i get nervous energy uh you know i get moments where i'm happy moments where i'm sad mo moments where i'm frustrated and all I do is I just get my shoes on and I go walking, baby. But as I'm looking, as I'm as I'm as I'm walking, I realize I'm thinning out a little bit. Yeah, look at uh, gone from two tires to one tire is what Mario Cavazzo says. That's it. That's it, baby. You know I don't have the uh, the uh, the uh, forty inch the 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 white walls uh, on there anymore, dude. You know it's <laughs> it's it's turning into a bike tire. You know the switching from uh, hand over fist. Does switching from beer to liquor count as a diet? I haven't had alcohol in four weeks. Damn. I if I go to Houston tomorrow to go to the UTSA tailgate over there, I will have alcohol. Okay, I'm not saying that I've given up alcohol, but I will tomorrow if I go to the game yeah, tomorrow. It's a game, tailgate. And right now, I'm feeling more and more up for it. More and more up for yeah, it. But this is this, this is all part of. This is all part of just the transformation, you know, because whenever life hits you in the gut, one of two things happens. Uh, you either you either crumble and you you self-sabotage yourself or you try to make yourself healthier. Yeah. And this time I'm trying to make myself healthier. Uh, I'm hoping that my wife sees that, uh, whether she wants to still work things out. I don't know. That's not up to me. But at the end of the day, I have a lot of nervous energy and I got to do something. Yeah, and as opposed to uh, being upset, going to therapy, I am walking, I am lifting weights, I'm doing things, and you know what? It's working. This shirt getting a little bit loose, getting a little bit loose. Fred Villarreal reaches out on YouTube. Guess you made the switch from flour to corn tortillas, but all perfectly round. You know, so I like obviously flour tortillas. Eating better doesn't mean eating perfect. Yeah, It's just staying within a certain calorie count in a day. You know, there was a, a study that uh, I saw this one guy do where he ate 10 candy bars a day Damn. for a month. And that was all he ate. Snickers. Right? He lost a ton of weight. Because he eats Snickers is 240 calories. So he was eating 2,000, 2,400 calories when he normally would eat 4,000 or 5,000. And he lost weight because it's that was just the calorie content. Uh, so I'm not I'm not going to ever profess to be some sort of health expert or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, but I do know that I'm burning more than I'm eating. And I, you know, if I want nachos, I'm gonna get nachos. If I, if, you know, whatever, whatever. But um, going from flour to corn, it's little things like that add up. Um, you know, eating eggs in the morning. See, it's not it's not so much the protein that gets you it's it's all the sides it's the papas it's the yeah it's the rice and well all my that nutritionist stuff. said if you can have two eggs every day for breakfast which is healthy you can even put salsa on it just get don't eat avocado. it with bread yeah just don't just eat it with bread or tortilla get some avocado Dude, heb has some excellent low carb tortillas yeah i've seen the, those and i've had them they're pretty good they're pretty good they're yeah. pretty good i mean it's not the same but it's like 80 percent the same it's palatable it's 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 very very good. Hey, let's get into it. Thank you for all the comments. Again, we're gonna go for about an hour and fifteen minutes or so today. Look I'm excited. That. I'm a, I'm antsy because I just got off the uh, the hills over here in West Bear County, three point two five miles today. I'm trying to catch up to my good buddy Rudy J over at San Antonio Sports Star. But you know we have to talk about Jeff Garcia from Locked On Spurs and Ken's Five because Jeff Garcia. Rumor has it is moving back to San Antonio, it's going to happen. I know we've been saying this for the longest time, that it hasn't happened, or when is it going to happen? But the Spurs season is about to start. That means Jeff Garcia, Ken's Five, lead sports writer for the San Antonio Spurs, needs to come back home and do his gig over here. He's not going to announce it. We we pretty much know when he's coming back. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We do. But money bags are there with the stacks of cash, with the steak that he gets from Uber Eats, with his goblet, with his chain and his top hat right Don't there, his diamond, the diamond ring, ring. Yeah. his diamond ring right there. Jeff Garcia, though, uh, fantastic 
follow him on YouTube because Locked on Spurs is also on YouTube. I follow on Spotify and on YouTube because as the season starts, it's going to be daily content when it comes to your silver and black, the San Antonio Spurs. And you can follow him at Jeff G Spurs Zone on Twitter. You can also follow him on threads as well. But the thing about it is that he mentioned today on Twitter, a story on Kens5.com, that the Spurs have announced the details of the Black and silver game. Was it silver and black game? The the coveted silver and black silver and black game. I knew I had that wrong. Silver and black game, which is going to take place Saturday, October seventh at seven p.m. at the new Frost Bank Center. Go frost yourself. Go frost yourself. Again, the thing about it is this: there are rules this year when it comes to it. In years past, it was like Black Friday. They they open to the public. They open the door like it's Best Buy, and people just storm in and take a seat, right? Not going to happen this way this year because the demand is so high. Victor Wembanyama in town. People are going to want to see Wemby, even if it's a practice against Zach Collins or a practice against somebody on the team. I know damn well I'm getting into that game. I'm a Spurs season ticket holder. You better better have my tickets. (laughs) (laughs) You better ask somebody. Yeah. But uh, two dollar beers, one dollar sodas, a fifteen percent discount inside the Spurs fan shop, according to Jeff Garcia from Locked on Spurs and Ken's 5. But again, you can't just show up. You need a ticket, okay? This is like the Eras Tour for Taylor Swift. You need a ticket before you get in. So you have to go to spurs.com slash open scrimmage and take part in the lottery. You can also get your tickets through the uh, Spurs app because that's what I did. As soon as you open up the Spurs app, like I did this morning, right? they have a link on there and you click on it and it says you've been entered to win Four tickets, you know, and they'll let you know in September. Yeah, so September, September 14th. 14th. September 13th is 13th. the deadline. Yeah. September 14th is, a, is when you find out if yeah. you win. You've got 72 hours to claim your tickets or you are kicked out of the line yeah. and somebody else gets those tickets. So go early. If you if you need to, go ahead and, and try to claim your tickets now. You know, go and get in the drawing. I'm more than sure that they're going to have plenty of tickets to, to mostly go around. For everybody who wants to go, because well, in years I don't past, know. Look, I in don't years know. Past, this is how it worked. They would open the the gates around, I think, four or five o'clock, and they had people lined up there all day waiting to come in. And when they would finally open the arena and everybody would sit down, there were a lot of empty seats, right? Like mm-hmm. half the arena was not even full on the upper decks, you know. So I think that's going to change this year because everybody wants to see Wemby, of course, right? But they're also going to have like little incentives where they're going to have, uh exclusive merchandise just for that game for you attending and they're going to have trivia they're going to have some giveaways that kind of stuff make it fun for the fans which i think is a good look on the san antonio spurs part because you want to open it up to the fan base you want to do you want to open it up to the raza we're the ones that buy the gear you know now the thing about it is this though is that the demand is so high oh i get that because of wemby yeah and you almost could make the argument that they could have had this at, at the Alamo Dome. That the, could that the demand would have been so high. I hated going to that game in January against Golden State. Watching the the game at the Dome was awful. No, oh, it was a good experience for me. I, I like I loved it. I mean, you ran into people like it was a high school reunion, but it was a it was a, from watching the game was bad. But going back to the Frost Bank Center. It is a, a, a thing. We have 17,000 people that are going to be there. And I, I like what you're saying right there about how you have La Raza going there. You know, you get people from – You're not pricing them out. Essentially the south and the west. Side. Yeah. You, you can't be priced out when it's free. Yeah. Um, the $2 beers, the $1 soda, it's a big deal, man. It's because a good family night. It's a family night, yeah. you know. You know and, and you can't just show up with 12 cousins. OK, <laughs> you have to win that lottery to make my that happen. Yeah, my deal, my cousins, September, my uncle. <laughs> September 13th, the deadline, spurs.com slash open scrimmage. Again, it's a lottery system. 72 hours to claim your tickets if you are picked as a winner on September 14th. Are you going to go? I would love to go. I would love to go because right now, you know, uh, I'm looking for reasons to get out of the house. And, and that's one of the things about the changes in my life over the last three months or so is that I was always on the go. I was out and about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, doing the podcast here on the days that I do, uh, running my, my financial practice from home. I do have an office, but my financial practice is at home. Um, it gives me a reason to get out. But it's why I want to go to the UTSA Houston game tomorrow. I really want to go. Really, really Look at this. want to go. 
Tim Gonzalez. Mike Jimenez rumors going around that money bags will be at Don Pedro. Don uh, he Pedro, said, Southwest Military Drive. Yeah, he said that he's not going to announce the date that he's coming back, but there will be signs. I'm like, you going to invite us to Don Pedro's? You know, it's funny about Don Pedro's is that um, it's a very polarizing restaurant. Like, there are some people who swear by Don Pedro's, and there are some who have said that they don't like the place. Don like Pedro's it. back in the day was this, was a smaller restaurant. It was a San Antonio staple, man. It was, but then they had that expansion. It must have been about 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it's funny because you go into the restaurant, and half of it's brand new, and half of it is still, still old. old. Yeah. And uh, you go over there. The food is fine. The breakfast is very good. Um. I mean, I'll give it a B. I don't think it's a bad restaurant. No, it's not bad. But, by any you means. know, you look at some of the restaurants on Marbach Road, on Culebra with Lupita's and stuff like that. I'd rather go there. And you know what? Low key, man, Bud Jones is like right across the street. Their Mexican plate is not bad, dude. It's been so long since I've been to Bud Jones. Bud Jones is not bad. And if you go behind Bud Jones and behind the um, Don Pedro's, the, about a block or two down, kind of like if, like if you're headed towards a little bit towards uh, a Harlandale Stadium. Yeah, there's some barbecue joints out there. Oh yeah, man, there are right. hole in the walls like that there. are just amazing. Just follow the smoke. Just <laughs> you can just, smell just, it. Just, just just point your nose up in the air and just start sniffing around. It is fantastic, man. Fantastic. Hey man, we went ahead and gave Jeff some love for Lockdown Spurs. Why don't we go get uh, one of our other sponsors some yeah, love? Let's... Why don't we go ahead and talk about? MCS. Oh, let's talk about MCS uh, contracting because Chris Leha, he and his brothers are are, are doing that. They they talk about those those big hard decks that they have over there. But no, MCS is fantastic. And the thing about them is this: think about what they do for a living and how hard they work. I was complaining the other day about the fact that I was out in the sun Jeez. for an hour doing a workout. And he was like, try being in long sleeves all day, all day long <laughs> in 105 degree weather, working on a swimming pool. But MCS General Contracting, I mean, they are the people to turn to if you have concrete needs. If you are building a, 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 a building, you know, whether it be a home or a business and you need a slab done, MCS General Contracting can hook you up when it comes to that. Sidewalks, pavements, parking lots, ramps. They can do that as well. And then again, again, they work with swimming pool companies as well to build those swimming pools. But one of the great things I like about them and in talking to the Lejas about this is the fact that they say it's not about doing it on the cheap. It is doing it right. Do you want us to come back and fix this in 10 years or in 20 or 30 years? Because that's the thing. You can get things done cheap, but you're going to have to constantly repair and renovate what gets done because you get what you pay for. Yeah, you get what you pay for. But MCS General Contracting, you can reach out to them at 210-774-9155. 210-774-9155. They do an amazing job, and they are out in the sun getting the job done, son. MCS General Contracting, 210-774-9155. Again, slabs, parking lots, you know. Hard decks. Hard decks. Those concrete decks, you want to do those expansions. That's these are the people to turn to. MCS General Contracting, sponsor of the show from the very get go, 210 774 9155. You know, I was talking about how I'm excited about UTSA starting its season tomorrow against the Houston Cougars. I'm a little bit conflicted, a little bit conflicted because the Houston Cougars are going to be trotting out there onto the field wearing a jersey. And you're ready for this. Oh my God, going, show man. it. Wearing a jersey in baby Bam, blue. There you go, baby. Baby blue Houston Oilers colors. This that, hurts man. me a little bit because I grew up the biggest Houston Oilers fans that, that, that you know of, that anybody knows of. I bled baby blue and silver and black. I was a Spurs guy. I was an Oilers guy. Now, right now, I'm a Saints guy. Okay? So for about a five or six-year period, I had no team. My fantasy football team was my team. So the Oilers and, and those colors mean so much to me. I love the Houston Oilers. I still do. I act like they're still around, but they died, right? They moved over to Nashville, the Tennessee, now. and all that stuff. But the colors belong to the city of Houston. And it's going to be painful cheering for 
the orange and blue of UTSA going against colors that I grew up loving, but I'm going for UTSA. UTSA, by the way, tomorrow a two-point favorite against Houston. They lost to Houston at the Alamo Dome last year in triple overtime. Uh, it's known because of uh, the fact that the crowd didn't realize that the game was over because the way that the triple overtime rules work. And it's also notorious because that was the, also the day that I walked out of the Alamo Dome doing a uh, – people claimed that I was drunk, but I was hungover. Two different things. My rant against UTSA's head coach. And the thing about it is this. Uh, UTSA's head coach, Jeff Trailer, echoed everything that I was saying in that video. UTSA lost the first game against Houston last year because Jeff Trailer decided to play not to lose as opposed to playing to win. UTSA went into the fourth quarter with the lead. They blew that game because suddenly they started playing conservatively and then it went to triple overtime and they lost. Houston did not win that game. UTSA lost that game. And Jeff Trailer is an amazing coach, an amazing recruiter, and I love that he's here. And he is one of the best coaches in the country. For me to call out the fact that he laid an egg, that he wet the bed, doesn't make me less of a UTSA fan. It makes me stating the obvious, but nobody yeah. wanted to hear that <clears throat> shit. Everyone was like, how dare you say that about Jeff Trailer?" And you said <laughs> it while you were drunk. Again, I was hungover. I hadn't drank in four hours. Okay. <laughs> I got drunk at the tailgate, but I, I hadn't done that, you know? So that's the, the guy thing. that throws up and then comes back powered up. <laughs> Puke and rally, <laughs> baby. Puke and rally. I'm ready. <laughs> that was uh, RIP to that guy from Varsity Blues. What was his name? Which one? The big guy? Yeah. Oh, I forgot his name, man. Uh, Billy Bob. Oh, yeah. Billy Bob. <laughs> Billy the one Bob. with the cowboy head. Yeah. yeah. He was also in the Another Teen movie. Man, the dude lost a lot of weight, bro. Rudy, <laughs> Rudy Gonzalez reached out saying, you were effed up. Again, I was drunk earlier in the day. Not now. Yeah, he drunk himself sober, man. Jonathan C. reaches out and says, trailer would have been the first to admit that he blew that game. And he did. He did. Chris Gonzalez, the lead UTSA. UTSA was dominant that game until the fourth quarter. That's the thing. And that's why UTSA is favored by two points in tomorrow's game, in the season opener. UTSA is the better team. And Frank Harris coming back. By the way, Mudslingers with a brand new drink for Frank Harris. So props to them for making that happen. But Trailer needs to... And, and he did so much better as the season went on. Jeff Trailer is, is human, dude. You know, he's it, he, as great of a coach as he is, he's going to have moments where he makes the wrong call. Yeah. And that's sometimes what I hate about sports is that sometimes when you're supposed to put your foot on the back of the neck of your opponent and you let it go, you let them off, you let them come back, you give them hope. And Houston came back to win that game. That was Trailer's fault, and he admitted it. So it gave me even more confidence in Jeff Trailer because he did come out and say, yeah, that was on me. But speaking of UTSA, big news, the breaking news this morning, the AAC, the new conference that UTSA is entering this month, has three new members starting next year. Talking about Stanford, Cal, or California, however you want to call them. And welcome, SMU, the SMU. Mustang, the ponies, baby, Pony Express, going to the AAC. Nice. So now I'm thinking about it. Look at this. People were saying that, you know, the, it's all this alignment that, that went on, right? We saw the, the demise, the death of the Pac-12. And you take a look at the AAC, and people were giving me crap about it because I was saying that the AAC is just as good as the Big 12. And people give me crap about that. I mean, just what last week when I was doing the show, people were giving me shit about that. And now I say, no, 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 no. We get Stanford, we get Cal, we get SMU. This is a very, very legit conference. So who did who did the AAC lose in the past year? They lost Houston, the Cougars. They lost the Cincinnati Bearcats, and they lost UCF. But who did they gain? UTSA, UAB, Rice. North Texas, Florida Atlantic, Charlotte, and now Stanford, Cal, 
and SMU. Let's talk about this when it comes to market size. They lost Houston, but they got Rice. Both in the Houston market. Houston Cougars probably with a bigger fan base, but at least they got Rice. So the Houston market's still there. But look at what, what the AAC is doing now, going into the Dallas market, getting SMU and North Texas, which is out in Denton, just outside of Fort Worth. Beyond that, you now add the San Antonio market, and then now you're going off to California and getting Silicon Valley, you know, getting Cal and getting Stanford, the Stanford Cardinal. You adding the Stanford Cardinal with, with Cal and the academics of that league to what we've got going on, now we can have this, this rivalry. Imagine a rivalry that is Stanford against UTSA. Not just in football, but in baseball, but in basketball. This is a big deal for UTSA. UTSA getting out of Conference USA into the AAC is a big deal. And you cannot tell me that the Big 12 is head and shoulders above the AAC. You can't tell me that when the most exciting team there is going to be what? Texas Tech? Guns up? Colorado? <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Texas and OU are leaving. And you see the, the, the commissioner of the Big 12 talking shit about UT, saying that Texas Tech better go in and beat them again for their, you know, as a send-off, right? And a lot of people going, oh, Sarkeesian coming out and saying, oh, well, that was just bad taste. You know, we talk about sportsmanship and all that stuff. Screw you, UT. You're leaving for the SEC. You ditched the Big 12. You're the reason why a and left. You're the reason why the Southwest Conference doesn't exist. Oh, we got a shout out here. JC saying, yo, shout out to Sweep the League. New episode just dropped. Always a good time with the crew. Yeah, go ahead and make sure you go and follow Sweep the League over on Twitter, man. And yeah. Listen, and take a listen to their, their podcast. You know, my boy Rudy Campos Jr. And everybody else, you know, Rocky Garza Jr. And Candace Garcia, Derek Gervin and Stats MC. We call him Mark MC. They always good, do a good job. So make sure you go and listen to their podcast. Now, Rudy does a fantastic job. Uh, I need to do a show with him. In the next uh, few weeks <laughs> yeah. or so. Like, Rudy's fun, man. He's a good guy, man. And uh, Charlie Hernandez reaches out to us on YouTube and says, it's the ACC that got those teams. No, it's the AAC that got those teams because the ACC fumbled the bag. They fumbled the bag. And now you're making me scared. Now you're making me scared. You're making me scared. I'm going to go to ESPN.com right now because according to what I was reading this morning, now you got me... <laughs> You got Chris me worried. Gonzalez, I think he's still hung over. Oh, the son of a bitch. SMU is in already in the AAC. They are going to the ACC. <laughs> You're still hung over. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so first of all, I read an article earlier this morning saying the AAC had already extended that invite, and the ACC had needed to have either Florida State. They needed to have uh, either Florida State or they needed to have Clemson, NC State, and there was another team that needed to roll over and authorize this because they needed to have 80% of their people to do it, right? And they had four holdouts. They needed one to roll over. They were going to go after NC State. So as of this morning, when I was working on this rundown, the AAC was in the mix. The AAC had offered that, that, that had made that offer. So, okay. So now, as Rudy says, Alamo Community Colleges can now enter the AAC. I like that. I like that. We'll have Palo Alto out there. <laughs> Fred Villarreal, you're not drunk. You're hungover. <laughs> As an Aggie, I'm watching. Okay. But the thing about it is this. The thing about it is this. I'm excited for tomorrow's game. Okay. I fumbled the bag over here because I hadn't refreshed my screen in two hours. Okay. I worked on my rundown at 9 a.m. when this hadn't happened. And this is time stamped here earlier in the day before I had done it. So my bad. I knew the ACC was still in the mix, but again, they needed to have one of their guys because Clemson, Florida State, North Carolina, and NC State were the ones that were um, balking at those schools joining. 12-3 on Friday, they made the flip. NC State was the one that flipped. Yeah, one of the other things that we need to start talking about too, we need to kind of transition is we need to go and talk about what Spectrum uh, did to their customers yesterday. Yeah, so Spectrum. Um, talk about poor taste, man. Well, I mean, this happens all the time, dude. Yeah, it does, man. But the timing, the timing is the thing that sucked because 
Spectrum could at least you could have warned a brother, man. You give him a heads up and tell him, hey, this is what's going to happen. Maybe you all should look for somewhere else to watch your games, you know. But Spectrum shit the bed and they just didn't close a deal with Disney, which owns ESPN. ESPN. Yeah. You know, and basically that was the the last shoe to drop, you know, for a lot of Spectrum uh, customers because they're left holding the bag. They're like, all right, man, I'm going to be able to watch college basketball to date. What the f? Is yeah, they happening? wanted to watch the Florida game yesterday. They were like, "What the fuck, dude!" Like all of a sudden, right before game time, bam, goes off the air. Well, ESPN doesn't play, man. I mean, you, you have to understand that ESPN is in a very weird situation right now because oh. uh, ESPN is growing up in the in the nineties, eighties, nineties, and two thousands. Right? It was all about ESPN. It was all about cable. It was it was all about cable. It was all about Sports Center. Dude, yesterday I went to um, I went to Walmart, right? And I, I go through, I get in my cart, and as I'm walking through the aisles, you you see that table off to the side, and it's Spectrum. You know, they're trying to get people to enroll into Spectrum, and I'm trying to avoid them. But they had this really attractive woman who was coming up, going, "Hey, can I talk to you for a second? Can I talk to you for a second? And I I went up to her and I said, "Look, I said I'm not interested in, in cable. Like, I'm not going to go back to cable." I'm going to go off and just do what I do. I cut the cord a long time ago. Yeah, me too. And people will say, well, the cord still exists. What does that mean? It just basically means to go away from actual cable. Yeah. And, you know, Stephen A. Smith the other day um, was talking on his uh, radio show. And he made mention to the fact that times are changing. You see all the layoffs that are going on over there. At ESPN, they got rid of a lot of big names, Wendy Nix being one of them this week. And you see what's going on over there. And the fact of the matter is, is that the way that they tabulate how people are watching is different. Because it used to be everyone watched according to a cable, whether it be Time Warner, whether it be Spectrum or whatever they're calling each other, themselves these days, Comcast or whatever the case may be. But as Stephen A. Smith pointed out, people are now watching on tablets they're watching on an app they need to get their money and the 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 espn's Disney's of the world don't know how to quantify that so much and are being stingy when it comes to cable and the thing about cable is this if you get a, a breakdown of your cable bill if you actually have cable you will notice that you are paying for channels that you do not watch i remember when i have cable right now i have, I have youtube tv I know that when I'm on there, I only watch like six channels, man. I watch ABC, NBC, CBS, right? Because I watch Ghosts on CBS. I watch Station 19 on ABC. You know, I, I will watch, you know, sports on KBB. I'll watch sports on KSET. I'll watch sports on, on WOAI. CBS, you know. CBS for, the, for golf and whatnot. No. College football, things like that. I watch ESPN, watch the Weather Channel, CNN, and that is about it. Yeah. So if I was to get cable, I would be paying for channels like Hallmark that I never watch. Yeah, I don't watch. I'd be part. watching. I'd be. I'd be paying for MSNBC, which I never watch. Fox. I'd be News. watching for Fox News Channel, which <laughs> I never watch. Yeah. And people want to buy things a la carte. They want to buy things a la carte. So if you have a cable subscription, the problem isn't the fact that ESPN is and, and Disney is dropping the hammer on these cable companies saying, no, this is what it costs to like this is the this we are a big reason why you guys exist. Yeah. My question for you is why do you have cable? You don't need it. You don't need it. Everything's going to subscriptions. And we saw this also with. Uh, with the Spurs, with that Sinclair. Oh yeah, the Bally Sports. The Bally Sports, which is god awful. It's garbage. Dude. It's trash. It's garbage. I'm so excited that the Spurs have more games on a national level because of Victor Wembanyama. Nineteen. Nineteen. Yeah. Fuck Spectrum, dude. That is the that hey. is the that is the shadiest. And then Sinclair, by the way, is a shady company to yeah. begin with, and yeah. they own two local stations. We talked about that earlier in the week, and I had let everybody know basically 
the NBA is keeping a close eye on on Valley Sports, you know, Valley Sports and its regional sports network, uh, because they've already filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. And it appears that they are about to default on the payment that they need to go ahead and give the NBA to continue to show these games because they've fallen. They've defaulted. They've fallen behind. They need to catch up. And they have an agreement already in place, and the NBA is not playing games either. Yeah. So if they're not able to go ahead and make that payment that's going to be due pretty soon, the NBA is actually looking at other avenues to go ahead and have these games televised. And it could go ahead and say, hey, let's open it up and let's see what the betting wars start at. NBC, you yeah. don't want to throw their hats in the game. Well, you we're know? seeing that now with um, Peacock. We're seeing that with Hulu getting into sports i mean i go on to hulu even apple's getting into apple's the getting into it i go on to hulu and i'm watching san Antonio fc games yeah you know because they're on there lots of people reaching out to us right now saying that youtube tv is pretty good i like youtube tv my friend george uh was the first to introduce me that to me he lives in houston i went to go visit him one day because i i don't know what i was doing in houston i ended up spending the night over there with him and his wife at at, at their house and they were showing me the um the the youtube tv and i was like that's pretty cool and then i decided to cut the cord and i gave youtube tv a chance and it's amazing but the thing about it though is this when there's bad weather <laughs> direct tv youtube tv that's where you have cable that works yeah because it's literally plugged into the wall and unless the the lights go out you still have something to watch i mean it starts raining bad outside uh, or you get a poor Wi-Fi reception, uh, you might have some issues with YouTube. If you have a Samsung TV, there is something called Samsung TV. Yeah. And it's a cable channel that they have that's built into their TV that you get for free by just owning the Samsung. Dude, I'm impressed with that. There's probably about 100 channels, and... A few of them are like regular channels like a CNN or a Fox business. But what's interesting about it, though, is that they'll have like a channel dedicated to a particular TV show. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like there is um, Forensic Files TV. And it's like for 24 hours straight, they play Forensic Files. There's a Dateline one. There's the making of the, they're making the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders yeah. one. Uh, they have some dedicated to, you know, um, Flip This House. Uh, family feud and all of that stuff. It's so cool, man. I love going on there all the time. Jonathan Siebert is out and says illegal streaming is where it's at. 4K streams, so I've been told. If you know, you know. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's where you need to have a friend who knows something, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't have a VPN on my network here for nothing, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give some love to Serenity Manor, an events venue over at Old Bandera Road. We like to say Kitty Corner. Kitty, Kitty Corner. Oh my God! Two your cousin. floors, country store. My cousin Lorenzo says Kitty Corner. <laughs> they do weddings there, with receptions, bridal showers, baby showers, quinceañeras, corporate events. You know, if you have a Christmas party that needs to be done, company Christmas party, family reunion, head on over to Serenity Manor over at fourteen four zero six Old Bandera Road. Not only that, but the weather is getting nicer so you're going to want to have outdoor events now exactly um, it's 14405 rather old bandera road we're showing some photos right now uh on our stream here the outdoors is beautiful because the thing is is that when you get out there to helotus the old helotus this is kind of like um you know probably about three or four miles outside of 1604 the hill country really starts to take take hold yeah take shape yep and it's beautiful out there it's a, it's a historic building over 100 years old. Jeff Garcia from Locked On Spurs and Ken's Five is calling right now. If you want to keep going with that because he should know that I'm on the air right now. Is there, is there yeah. some breaking news? I'll go ahead and get it, man.
It's a good place to be. It's just a place to have fun, have some vibes. And again, after the concerts, make your way over. I was talking to Jeff Garcia on the other side. I had to move the microphone over. And I was thinking to myself, he knows that I'm doing the show on Fridays, right? Why is he calling right now? Is there a breaking news? Did the Spurs make a trade? And he goes, hey, you didn't call me back. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Mate, was the breaking news that he's back here on uh, back in San Antonio? That would be breaking news. That would be breaking oh, news. Oh, what he was saying was, I, I know I had Mike muted real quick. You did? And I went ahead and caught it, so I, I brought the volume back up for you. Very, very nice. I'm a little bit embarrassed, man. I took some news from three hours ago, taking it as gospel, and then I effed it up because I didn't hit the refresh button before starting the show. My bad. I'm a little bit embarrassed. It happens from time to time. But I was amped up. Still excited about UTSA football tomorrow, though. Uh, I invited a couple of my nephews, and I'll probably ask my other nephews as well. Uh, I got to I gotta make my way out there, dude. I, I just need to get out of town just to go have a little bit of fun, just get away from the city, <laughs> get away from private things going on in my life right now. But uh, Chris Gonzalez reaches out and says, damn, Joe went all spectrum on us with the mute button. With the mute button. <laughs> Let's but, talk about some pop culture. Oh, God, we're going to go ahead and talk about some Taylor Swift now. Dude. You know what we haven't done in a long time since we're going to do this? Yeah. I didn't make this little intro for nothing, man. So we got to play it. Let's do it. Let me go ahead and move myself off the stream. And here we go. In entertainment news. Because I'm here, we got to talk about Taylor Swift. That we I, I, do. I'm a Taylor Swift fan. Dude, you know that the heiress tour is just killing it, right? She's going to become a billionaire probably by the end of the year we've heard the stories about how she gave all of her workers a hundred thousand to two hundred thousand dollar bonus she surprised them all she's in mexico city all these mexican fans out there just loving her over there they're singing selena songs she's not singing it but her opening act her new opening act over there is singing selena songs out there and they're just chanting taylor's name all of that stuff the merch outside the stadium the illegal birch no is no. is everyone's just saying that it's so epic and it's such a big party over there i go on tiktok i see it it's great it's beautiful it's great man. people realize that taylor swift is the biggest musician the biggest act since michael jackson they should have some of the local artists come out and sell their wares there and yeah say, hey, you know what why don't you give us a little percentage but you know what we want the flair we want the love of the city she's take, know? taking over the world baby and she's coming on back so we knew that she was the queen of music right now, and people have fallen in love with her, the ones that even said that they hated her. But the thing about this is that she's now going to take over the movie theaters because she announced yesterday that the Eras Tour movie is coming out. I don't know if it's going to be a documentary, part documentary, part concert, or what. Maybe it's going to be like that Madonna one from years ago. Remember how it was all behind-the-scenes stuff? Yeah it, yeah, it could be. Where well, it's a little bit of everything, you know. Uh, that's that's the thing is that, you know, she's going to be coming out October thirteenth. Look at what Chris Gonzalez says. Flix Brewhouse is going to be showing this. Okay, so you're not going to watch this at Santicos, right? So I'm looking at it right now. Uh, Flix Brewhouse apparently is going to be a, one of them, along with AMC theaters. And in this area right here, there's only two AMC theaters. There's River Center Mall. Yeah. And there's Bernie. The one in River Center is real shitty, dude. It is, dude. That yeah. used to be the place, it's man. It's bad, dude. I remember being in the 90s, being in high school or college, and I'd be like, hey, girl, you want to go out? Because, you know, I I had game. And I'd be like, I'd be like, <laughs> what movie What movie theater do you want to go to? I'm like, baby, you, we can, you can choose between Hebner Oaks or River Center Mall. We could do River Center Mall? Yeah. We'll go to River Center Mall. We'll... I'll pay for the parking. Actually, you didn't have to pay back then. You just had to get validated, right? And then you go up the big ass uh, escalators, dude. Have game, you know the game of you want to go to Olive Garden before the movie, because I got you if you do. No, I got God. you. Dude, I'm telling you, man. I'm 11 pounds from being f and cute again. 11 pounds 11 away. 11 pounds from being f and cute, dude. And Chris Gonzalez reaching out to us. Actually, uh, uh, I can't even. I can't even read that as a wiki. 
coming oh, yeah. out to Wiki. say that Michael Jackson had one called This Is It. Yeah. And and uh, do you know who Andrew Schultz is? Do you know who Andrew Schultz is, Joe? Yeah. The 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 podcaster, the comedian. Yeah, yeah. Um call if you can call up, can can you call up on uh on uh, TikTok or do you have, do you have TikTok or or YouTube? Let's see. I got YouTube on here. There's a there's a thing that he posted a couple of days ago about Taylor Swift going to a concert even though he hates her. And he posted this a couple of days ago. It, it's a it's a TikTok that he had and I found it very interesting because I mentioned a couple of months ago and people thought I was stupid when I was saying that I believe that 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 um Taylor Swift rivals Michael Jackson. And they think it's weird cuz they're like, "Oh, well no." What about Adele? What about Beyonce? What about Lady Gaga? What about you know, Metallica, Linkin Park? Yeah. You know, all these musicians for the past 25 years. Andrew Schultz is a comedian who cannot stand Taylor Swift. And he released a video talking about the fact that he went out there and oh, saw the concert. I think this is it. Let's, let's, let's see if we can play it. That I've ever seen in my life. Really? The only person you can compare Taylor Swift to is Michael Jackson. Really? There's nobody else. It is you're doing a disrespect and a disservice to any other artist if you compare Taylor Swift to that. I'm being honest with you. I know there's a lot of cops. I know you know. You know. You know. Come on, son. You already know. You already know. Come on, bro. Come on. Oh, you think you're the only one that can rile? Yo, yo, you think you're the only one that can rile? Let <laughs> me so, tell you something. Okay? <laughs> Listen, Taylor Swift. I heard we, it's amazing, though. Oh, I heard it's like a stage play. I did hear that shit. It is the most amazing live concert I've ever seen. Really? It's not, it's not even close. The only person you and you've seen Beyonce. No, Son, yeah. I've seen Beyonce. No, you haven't. Ooh, <laughs> I've seen Beyonce. <laughs> is a generational talent it's yeah. just, a, a talent like beyonce does not come along what i'm what i'm trying to say is you're doing a disservice to beyonce to compare her to taylor swift because taylor is in another galaxy yeah, yeah. you know yo, all jokes aside I, 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 and i mean this so, and this uh, is gonna I'll, hurt I'll this up over here so andrew schultz by the way who by the way his podcast is amazing the the andrew schultz podcast one of my favorite ones out there because he likes to talk shit he likes to go after people, but he keeps it real, dude. He, he kind of reminds me of Howard Stern of the 90s, but he's kind of keeping it real. And screw Joe Rogan because I don't like Rogan's shit, right? Nah. But Andrew Schultz pissed off the people on that show who were like, well, what about Beyonce? What about uh, Beyonce? You know, And he goes off to, after them and says, no, she's on an island on her own doing her thing, whereas Beyonce has always had other people, you know? She's doing features. She's with Jay-Z. She's with this other artist. She's with Destiny's Child. She goes, no, this girl does it by herself. It was so great. But again, uh, what ended up happening was that Taylor Swift is going to have a movie coming out about the Eras Tour October 13th. And The Exorcist was supposed to come out that same day. And The Exorcist, the new movie part of that franchise, has decided to move it back up to October 6th. And the way that they announced it was they tweeted it out that they were changing the date and they hashtagged it with the title of a Taylor Swift song, Look What You Made Me Do. No, oh, man. <laughs> They're getting into it. They're getting into it. <sighs> Chris Gonzalez reaches out on YouTube and asks, uh, he says, hey, I know you mentioned Mexico earlier. Did you see this? They built stands outside the stadium for the overflow of fans on both sides of the street. Damn. Dude, we're witnessing Michael Jackson, dude. We are witnessing Michael Jackson. Do you see this? Tim Gonzalez. Good Lord. Mikey Menace says he's got game. I do. <laughs> Look at Mario. Man. I do. And, 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 and the thing about it is this, is that, you know, when I say I have game, Bro. is that I have no problem communicating as far as having a conversation, right? I will let it be known that the next date that I want to have is going to be with my wife, 
Okay. I love my wife and I hope we work things out. Okay. First and foremost, but I've oftentimes joked about the fact that I quote unquote have game because I've never had a hard time finding a date. Yeah. You know, a quality date. Never had a hard time. If I wanted to go, I wanted to go, but I don't want to go. I want my wife. And my wife and I are going through stuff right now, and it may or may not work. But I say that I have game. And I say that I'm effing cute because I'm losing weight. <laughs> and the thing about it is this, is that you know there, there's a certain weight that someone is where they know they look better than they did before. It's like that one pound difference, right? And I know I know the stages of my cuteness, okay? When I hit a, when I hit tier one and then tier two and then tier three, dude, right now I'm seven pounds away from having a brand new wardrobe. Damn. And then after that, I was looking at a photo of me and my wife. It was at, at our baby shower 12 years ago. And I know how much I weighed that day. I remember how much I weighed that day. I don't know if I could ever get there, but my goodness, I was looking good. I was looking good. And then, dude, come on, looking good and having having great personality. It's you know what game. I gotta do? I gotta it's give a game. I gotta give a shout out to to one of our viewers here, one yeah. of our, our fans. It's the one and only Stephanie Mejia. Yeah. Birthday. You know, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Steph. Chicana Fuerte. You know, that's uh, Spernandez's uh, girl right there. I'm probably going to go and hang out with them for a little bit tomorrow, you know, because they're going to celebrate her birthday. I told them I'd drop in. And, oh, yeah. And they're going to be at the friendly drinks. spot. Yeah. I'm going to go and drop in and have some drinks with them before UFC. If I'm not in Houston for the UTSA game, yeah. I'll go stop by. I'll go stop by. She's funny, though, man. She, she is, gives me so much crap. She's low-key very funny, dude. Yeah, she gives me so much crap about, like, some of the things that I post because she's like, why do you say certain things that you know people are going to rag about you on? <laughs> First of all. You got no filter, bro. I got no filter, <laughs> but I also got no care. You think that I, I'm going to care? That's a good thing. It's like when you can laugh at what other people are saying about you and you can laugh at yourself, it's, it's a good time, man. I'm just trying to, you know, and it's funny because someone posted, I think it was, I, I don't know if it was you or or Jeff that posted, you know, Michael was just feeling good about himself and he just got, he got dragged. And it's so funny because I'll take a nap and then I'll get back on Twitter and I'll see 40 mentions and I'm like, what the hell happened here? <laughs> and, and, and in that nap time, somebody photoshopped me into something. No, oh, dude, that's hilarious, man. Usually it's going to be, uh, what's his name, Bear County Social Apparel. Yesterday I went ahead and said something to the effect that Budu Pinche Marbach Mop, and I had put the picture of you oh, that yeah. with you in the Marbach Mop. Dude, I said, want, dude, I was, I was so mad the other day when that one guy got arrested for robbing all those people. Oh, and yeah, he had the ka, he had the Edgar. The Marbach ka. Yeah. No quemas ka. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you should just get arrested for that. John C. reaches out to us on YouTube and says, that's why you're the A1 show in San Antonio. You pull back the curtain, let your listeners into your life, personal and business. Hope everything works itself out. I hope so too, John. John seems a great guy, by the way. Um, I, I hope it works out. I, I love my wife more than anything in the world. But some, but you know, sometimes you can't control things. Yeah, you can't make people feel the way, change the way they feel. Right. You know, and I have a lot to blame, dude. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. It, it, a lot of it was me. You know, because the personality of being on radio changes you. Or being on a podcast changes you. It does. And, um, you know, there's certain things to like about it and certain things not to like about it. Yeah. You know what? We're going to talk about this, too, since we're kind of talking about subjects. Let's go ahead and get on this. Today is Spurs Day on NBA TV, man. So if Ooh. you're looking at a day to go ahead and call in, today would be the day. Because they got 30 teams, 30 days. And right now, today is going to be Spurs Day. You know, these are all Eastern time, so they're going to have the Hardwood Classic game, which is going to be the 05 Western Conference Championship game uh, between the Golden State. I'm not Golden State, but the Suns and the and the Spurs. That happened at 8 a.m. at 12 o'clock. They're going to have the Spurs and Suns uh, 08 Western Conference. Oh, is that when uh, Ori hip-checked uh, hip Steve Nash into the table? <laughs> oh, I, I know exactly where I was, I was at Car uh, Cornival in Helotus watching on a big screen that they had on a, they had a big old projector out there. Yeah. And, you know, I was so pissed that we were at Cornival. I love Cornival. Yeah. But I was so pissed because the Spurs were playing. And then when I saw that projector, I was watching it. And I remember watching Ori do that. And I thought to myself, I'm so glad 
that he is on our team. Can I talk about Robert Ori for a second? Yeah, or go ahead, wrap, wrap this up, by the way, and, and we'll get into yeah, Robert yeah. Ori. So you have the other game's going to be. It's going to be the 2014 Champions Revealed Special at 2. Victor Wembeyama, you know, Team Ignite versus the Bolgin Levelassels or whatever at 5. Then you have another Victor Wembeyama game, Spurs Summer League versus uh, the Charlotte Hornets. And then the last one of the day is going to be the Spurs Summer League versus Portland. That ends the day at 10.30 p.m. I think these are all Eastern times, so it's 9.30 p.m. Our, our time. But either way, great slate of games available for Spurs fans. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, look up something for me real fast. Yeah. Uh, Robert Ori, Michael Cooper. Okay. There's a, an interview that he did. And while you're looking that up, let's uh, send some love to Cynthia J. Sanchez from J. Parr Real Estate because Cynthia J. Sanchez is the resident real estate agent here for the Alamo City Podcast Network. You can reach out to her at 210-273-0748. If you're trying to buy a primary residence, you're trying to sell a home, buy a rental property, buy a an Airbnb type of place, you can reach out to Cynthia J. Sanchez at 210-273-0748. She's been in business for 16 years. She knows what she's talking about when it comes to real estate, so much so that if you go to Realtor.com and check out her reviews, you're going to see five stars across the board about how punctual she is, how responsive she is, and how she helps people through the whole process. She's not trying to sell you a home. She's trying to sell you the right home at the right price, and she has a network of people who will go out and get you the loan that you need. And right now, you might be thinking to yourself, hey, I was watching the news. They have the highest interest rates right now in over 20 years. She knows some builders right now doing new builds that are offering interest rates in the 4% range. 4% range for a new build. And again, we're seeing property values go down a little bit right now because of the high interest rates. Have it go down a little bit, get it at a 4% rate. Not as good as it was back in the day when it was two and a half, right? But four is still very, very, very good. And again, this is a, a rate that they might get you locked into for a few years or so. But the fact of the matter is, is that at least gets you into the home and we can wait for these interest rates to come down. Cynthia J. Sanchez can tell you which neighborhoods this can happen at, which builders are doing the internal financing of homes. J. Parr Real Estate, 210-273-0748. But not just J. Parr. You want Cynthia J. Sanchez at J. Parr Real Estate, 210-273-0748. And if you buy a home from her, that is pre-owned, she's offering the ability to buy you a home warranty valued at $600 in case the AC goes out, the washer, the dryer, the refrigerator. Again, Cynthia J. Sanchez, J. Parr Real Estate, 210-273-0748. My name is Mike Jimenez with Joe Garcia here at the Alamo City hey, Podcast you, Network. You were telling me to look up Rob Borey and who else? And Michael Cooper. Michael Cooper. Yeah, so it's interesting because um, I'm a personal believer that Robert Ori needs to have his jersey retired here at the Frost Bank Center. And the Spurs have Tim, Tony, and Manu. They have Gervin, right? But then they have some supporting cast. I mean, I know Sean Elliott was an all-star. But they have Avery Johnson. You've got Bruce Bowen, Johnny Moore, James Silas. You know, the Spurs have some, some numbers up there up at the rafters. And I've always said this about Robert Ori. One of the greatest things that he's ever done was back in 2005 when he led the Spurs to that title. That 2005 title happened because of Robert Ori. And I'm not being facetious. I'm not joking around. I think that right there deserves to have his jersey up there. And I know that he considers himself a Houston Rocket. I know he considers himself a Laker. But that title was because of what he did in game six and seven. Yeah. He carried this team to that title. And that honor also needs to be bestowed upon Kawhi Leonard at some point also, because that dude was the finals MVP. And we don't have 2014 without him. Yeah, we, Robert we Ori. Don't. I saw this video of Robert Ori, and he's uh, saying that Michael Cooper's jersey should be retired yeah. before LeBron's. Yeah, so the thing about that is, is that there was a story that came out about a week ago that talked about the fact that the, the head brass of the L.A. Lakers is saying that they're going to retire LeBron James's jersey. And LeBron James has won one title there in LA, and it was in the bubble. Yeah. Okay. He's also led them to bad seasons as well. But for some reason, it's because he's a superstar. 
they're going to want to have LeBron, LeBron James's jersey up there. And the thing about it is that Michael Cooper is somebody who has not had his jersey retired. And that's the excerpt right there. Robert Ori just went off on this earlier this week, was talking about the fact, saying, why are we doing this? Why are the Lakers going to elevate LeBron James when Michael Cooper is the one who was part of the championship run, you know, the championship runs of the 80s, right? Played so many years, was a, a defensive player of the year, made so many defensive player of the uh, uh, defensive first teams out there he guarded the best player larry bird for many years when you ask larry bird who was the hardest person that you were defended by he would always say michael cooper and was going off and this was the showtime lakers right we think of the showtime lakers of uh you had magic right i mean obviously he was the ringleader kareem you had kareem you had james worthy you had byron scott yeah kurt rambis but michael cooper was the one that would go in there and lock down your best player he was their Bruce Bowen. He, he was, was their that, Bruce Bowen. Yeah, that lockdown he was. defender. Yeah, he was. And Robert Ory bringing this up, saying, "Why?" And he says here, he goes, "I base everything off Michael Cooper." You know, it's just hard for me when you retire a guy's number and you don't retire Michael Cooper's number, and it it is just to me it it does it. I don't. He goes, "I it don't." Nobody should go before him. You know, two time defensive player of the year. Help win championships. He always guarded the people that Magic Johnson couldn't. That 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 you know that that's the thing right there, is that this was a role player, yeah. but this wasn't just a role player, two time defensive player of the you year. Know? And and there's certain players out there that just don't get the love. He's and and, and and Michael Cooper brought more to the Lakers than LeBron James did, but he doesn't have LeBron James's name. He LeBron James helped them win one chip. Michael Cooper helped them win multiple chips. And then, you know, Robert Ory goes on to say, it's just so many things, you know, that goes to show you have people in the league and NBA and across. They don't appreciate defense unless you're Ben Wallace or Dennis Rodman. And I just think that if you retire LeBron's jersey, you got to retire Michael Cooper's because he's just a Laker legend to me. That's, what that's Robert Ory's. That's Ory's a very good point, man. I'm glad that Rob. Uh, when I saw that TikTok of Robert Ory in that podcast talking about Something, this, yeah. uh, I was very, very proud. You know, a lot of uh, Spurs fans have um, indifferent feelings towards Robert Ory because Robert Ory will oftentimes say that he believes that Hakeem Olajuwon was a better big than both Tim and Dave. Yeah, I'm sorry, but but Hakeem Olajuwon is a top 15, top 20 player of all time. That's not an insult what's an insult is when they're saying you know anthony davis is as good as tim duncan that's an insult yeah. robert ori i'm mean, sorry uh kim olajuwon is an all-time great yeah okay he's he's picking an all-time great over another all-time great that's not insulting okay robert ori may not want to go into the uh robert ori may not consider himself a spur might not consider himself he considers himself more of a laker and as a as a, a rocket but he had some glory with the Spurs, too. And I think the Spurs should honor him for that. I yeah. really do. That's that one supporting cast character of a championship run that needs to be up there on the rafters. Yeah, one other thing that we're going to talk talk about right now since we're talking about stuff like this is the Spurs. You know, look, Eastern Michigan went ahead and immortalized the great George Gervin, the Iceman. Yeah. And there's a there's a arena or I named after him. That's on the campus, you know, and in front of this arena here now stands the George Gervin statue the, the finger em roll. embrazened in, in bronze there doing the infamous finger roll, you know, and you can see that here. I mean, that's that's amazing. This is long overdue. I think the Spurs should do the same thing. And look at this is history in the making because he's still alive at this time. You know, you still have your legends, your greats that are still alive. They're able to go ahead and talk to the crowd and say what this means to them as an athlete, you know, mm -hmm. and, and their legacy that they're leaving behind because now this is a, a lasting memorial that others can go ahead and come and see and say, I remember him. This is a great George Gervin, you know, and yeah. the Spurs don't have that. You, you look at the AT&T Center, and while they have memorabilia inside that remembers the greatness of the team, why aren't you going ahead and doing something for your greats, your legends? Yeah, I, I was in L.A., and outside the Lakers arena, you see some statues out there as well. Um, 
I don't see the Spurs doing a statue. I would like to see it. Yeah. And if you have if you have to ask the question, which is the spur that deserves to have a statue first? I would argue that that's David Robinson. David Robinson saved the Spurs. Without David Robinson, the Spurs do not exist in San Antonio. They would have gone off someplace else. They'd be playing in Nashville right now. They would have gone to Seattle, right? Um, I'm looking at David Robinson, and if the Spurs were to ever give that honor, it would be to him. Now, I know there's some religious overtones sometimes about idols and things like that, and, and people may not want to have a statue made of him. But if there was a Spurs statue, I would want it to be of David Robinson. Um, you could have a statue of David in a moment where it meant something to him, where he's doing something with the community. You yeah, know, it could be that that would be like, hey, not only was he a great basketball player, but he was a great ambassador for what he did for the city, you know, and, and revitalizing the community and giving, you know, his self and his likeness and his money uh, to put back into the city, you know. It's it's amazing when you go back in time and you think about all the great Spurs and all the runs that we had as fans of this team. I had a, a conversation, I think it was over at Matt Packer the other day, talking about how the Spurs won five titles and we are blessed because they won five titles in 15 years, but how close we could have had nine. Yeah. We could have had nine. Where is Tim Duncan in the pantheon of players of all time if he's walking around with nine rings? It was so close. Point four, Derek Fisher. Yeah. Ray Allen's shot in game six in the 2013 finals. Manu hacking Nowitzki in the Western Conference finals. Um, Duncan getting hurt one year. Yeah. You know, having plantar fasciitis. Uh, it's amazing that the run the Spurs had. Yeah. Hey, it, as it, we're bringing the show to a close here, we got to go ahead and talk about what happened. Wait, what happened with Mike at Channel 41? That's what Tim Gonzalez wants oh to Oh, my know. God. I forgot we were going to talk about that. You need to tell us, man, because okay, so, we're getting up against it. So um, I used to do – I used to be a TV news reporter, and uh, I used to do documentaries for a nonprofit. And oftentimes it was about celebrities and things like that. And they, they asked me to do a, a documentary – on Jorge Ramos, which is like the big anchor for Univision. He's been, yeah. he's like their Peter Jennings or their Dan Rather. You know, he's their Wolf Blitzer. He's been around <laughs> forever, right? And he says, yes, I'd be more than happy. He's going to accept this award. And before the award, they would, they would want to run like a two or a three minute long, four minute long video about his life and all that stuff. This was probably in about 2003, 2004. And so about 20 years ago, they sent me to Miami. I was getting paid to go party in Miami, right? Oh, nice. And I go there, and they sent me to the Univision Studios so that we could set up and do this video, this this these interviews with people. And I walked in, and I had never seen so many attractive Latinas in one place at one time. You were like a kid in a candy store. Head was on a swivel. Okay, first of all. <laughs> First of all, if I'm not mistaken, Sabalo Gigante was being filmed that day. Oh, man. Okay. And I'm walking in. Dude, it didn't matter what position somebody was doing. If they were a, 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 if they were talent on air, if they were a producer, if they were a receptionist, dude, the janitorial staff at Univision were a bunch of tens. They just I – I, I, and I'm not joking. The people coming around, wheeling around – the basura around the place these nuggets dude <laughs> these absolute argentinian colombian venezuelan mexican cuban puerto rican dominican nuggets you had gold all around you dude it like the 400th hottest woman in the building was a 10 oh my god dude univision in miami it's just <laughs> obscene. Bro. The talent in that place. <laughs> Mario Cavazos. They figured out you were a coconut. <laughs> yeah, okay. But but if I was to do a better off dead reference here, they would have figured out that I would have been able to have spoken the international language of love. <laughs> Sabato Gigante is the shit. 
says Mario Cavazos. Dude, Sabalo Gigante. I have no idea what's going on. Dude, do you remember? Do you remember on Saturday mornings about 25 years ago, Red McCombs, the dealership on I-10 and Callahan, would have the girls from All Stars oh, across the street yes. modeling for a one-hour sale. Yeah, and it would come out on channel forty-one or channel Some eight. Weird, or whatever. weird offbeat channel. Dude, yeah, I remember man. watching it one day, and I I mentioned it when I was working at Case at the time, and Greg Simmons was like, "Dude, you're kidding me," and no. I'm like, "No, the the effing strippers from All Stars would walk across the street, or they'd do that on a Saturday morning and then be done at noon, and then go across the street back to All Stars." Dude, Red Red Combs was Nessio, dude. His that dealership complete Nessio, man. I remember even seeing Vanessa Macias back in the day. She used to sell cars on the weekends. Yeah, but on, she did look Channel cla- 41. She was, was more classy. She was though. classier, though. Yeah. Man. We're not gonna talk about TD's wife that way. No, she, no, she's she was great. classy. Was yeah, no, I remember seeing her though on the TV too, because she would do the same thing. But the one that was Nessio was Red McCombs, no yeah. doubt. Oh, complete Nessio. Vanessa Macias is is, is uh, Macias Duncan. Uh, is is great. I, I've met her yeah. a few times. She's always been super nice. She's great. Chris Gonzalez reaching out and saying Mike was mopping the floor with his tongue since he it was on was, drooling. Man. Dude, I'll never forget walking into Univision. I'll never forget walking in and walking through the hallways, into the boardrooms, into the into the studios, and I'm just there going, dude, every person in here, not every guy, Ten. every woman in there, absolute nugget, dude absolute nugget and miami's that town man because miami is a isn't miami is not part of the united states just call it what it is dude it's not part of the united states it is it is venezuela it is cuba it is colombia it is mexico it's all sorts of things it ain't american yeah that's for sure billy bob <laughs> joe gonzalez just out and says 10 she's a 10 billy, billy bob. bob what was the name of that teacher on uh varsity blues Oh God! Uh, he's like Miss Davis. <laughs> Miss Davis, we got a problem with me. <laughs> hey man, real quick too, as we're we're gonna have to go ahead and shut everything down now. But I wanted to talk to you about this real fast. The Alamo Dome, they're gonna be doing some upgrades here. I saw this on uh, Twitter, off of Meep Meep Nation. So the Alamo Dome is just went ahead and got approval for twenty nine million uh, in upgrades which will include 18 additional club-level suites, improved sound systems, upgraded concession areas, and more. There's, the city is still pumping money into the Alamo Dome, you know, and they're pumping in a lot of money into the Alamo Dome. Dude. But you can, you can make the inside look as pretty as you want. The outside is ugly as fuck. Bro. Yeah, I mean, I know the, the outside's ugly, but and it gets ranked as one of the ugliest buildings in the, uh, in the country. It's hideous, man. Do you know what this reminds me of? And, and, and I know UTSA fans are going to get pissed off about this because Meet Meet Nation, love you guys, go UTSA this weekend. It reminds me of like when I hear $25 million, do you know what this tells me? This is like putting $5 in the gas tank <laughs> and going two or three more years and putting five more dollars of gas in because it's not a huge massive renovation. A massive renovation of the Alamo Dome will probably – cost two or three hundred million dollars basically make it bulldoze the whole damn thing and build something better well the concourse sucks dude it does the concourse sucks it it, it has Aging. no personality at all it's just all concrete dude cinder block concrete yeah i mean it was built and you got that ugly ass glass all over the place that's reminiscent of the 80s you, you know, know i'm just like <sighs> you know here's the thing about the alamodome exterior It's so ugly that when it's lit properly, it's actually effing cute. (laughs) At the right angle with the moon and Jupiter and everything aligned. Well, I'll give you an example. You know, where where my (laughs) office is for finance, I'm in the uh, pyramid building on San Pedro and 410. The one that that, (laughs) That stays lit up all night. (laughs) But, But look how pretty it is. Yeah, it's not bad. It, it needs to be bad. lit up that way. I think they just need to have a a little something. bit of a of a light show on there. Something going on with that. Uh, but the Alamo Dome, uh, I'd rather have the Alamo Dome than what was there before because if you see the photos 
of what was there before railroad tracks, you know, cattle shit. You know, I mean, it was just no. I okay. Look at Fred Villarreal. He says the improvements at the Alamo Dome are part of the agreement. The NCAA basketball final four. They had that in order in order to host the uh, 2025 final four here. We still get stuff there, baby, because you know what? 68,000 seats. Yeah. 68,000 seats. But man, this has been a fun show. Uh, go UTSA football this weekend. Two point favorites against the Houston Cougars. That's tomorrow in Houston. Oh, road run. Again, the Cougars are going to be there uh, wearing Houston Oilers inspired jerseys. UTSA, again, favored by two points. This weekend, also Sunday night, LSU taking on Florida State. It's a battle of two Ooh, top eight that's teams. Gonna that's going to be in Tallahassee, which got ravaged the other day by that hurricane, hurricane. that hit Florida. So that's going to be Sunday night. Hope everyone has a fantastic weekend. It's Labor Day weekend. Uh, you know, everyone's going to be chilling out on Monday. If you can hit the roads, hit the hit the beach. It's this is the end of summer, if you will. Yeah. Labor Day is the unofficial part. Can't end of be summer. wearing white no more after Memorial. Yeah, unless you're Diddy. Yeah, unless unless you're Diddy. Uh, apologies again for my horrible college football talk at the beginning. I will refresh my screen next time before coming on in. Jeez. Uh, again, follow Jeff Garcia from Locked On Spurs and Ken's Five. They do a fantastic job over there. Uh, he does a fantastic job over there. But uh, again, everyone have a safe weekend out there. Um, stay hydrated. If you go into the the if you're going to go to the uh, tailgate and I'm there, flag me down. Flag me down. I will uh, take a take a shot. Yeah, take a I picture and make sure you put the hashtag F and cute. I haven't had a drop of alcohol <laughs> in 28 days. 28 days. My boy's thirsty. Some would say in more ways than one. I love my wife. Hey, you know what? Send us prayers. Send yeah, us man. prayers. I'm willing to accept them. Thank you so much for that. But uh, everyone have a fantastic weekend. Asking the show, will there be a show on Monday? Is of course. With, uh, Tim Gonzalez? I, I don't know. I got to think about that. It depends if I'm off or not. Because if I have to work, I think they want us to go in early. So I got to okay. clarify that. Paul Cantu saying he enjoyed the show. Very, very nice. And also, don't forget, Sunday, Fantasy Gods. With Fantasy Brandon guys, Medina yeah. does an amazing job along with Rudy Campos Jr. Do an amazing job with that. Thank you again to Mudslingers. Thank you again to Bear County Social Apparel. And thank you again to all of our sponsors over there when it comes to uh, Mad Packer Brewery uh, for when it comes to the Fantasy Gods as well. But uh, this has been a fun time. Thank you for letting me grace this studio again one more yeah, time. Of course. Everyone have a safe weekend. My name is Mike Jimenez. That's Joe Garcia. Have a happy, happy Labor Day weekend. We'll see you guys. Peace.